All oh, glory to his name. Hallelujah. Let's magnify. Let's worship that we stop in the love. For he is worthy of all the honor. He is worthy of all the glory and praise.
serve the living God, he will never let me down. He's always moved. And if he moved for me, I'm his son. You are his sons and daughters. He will move for you. Put your trust in him. Whatever you're going through today, bring it before the living God. Trust him today. As you give today, as you bring your tithes and offerings, trust him. And watch him move this week. Watch him start moving things, and you'll say, wow, God. Why? Because you and I are that holy nation. We are the covenant people, bought by the blood. The blood, the blood is the issue. We are the covenant people of God. He paid a price. He gave his life for you and I. Never forget who you are in him. Amen. If I can have the ushers come forward here. Hallelujah. Father, we just love you and praise you. Right now, every spirit of poverty, every lie, every lack, every want has been broken by the blood. My God, because we put you first to obey you, to trust you, God. As we come before you, God, today, God, in this time of offering, God, I thank you, Lord, that you move upon your people. You bless your people here. God, as we bring forth our tithes and offering before you, bless each and every heart. Bless them, God, going and going out. Bless their life, their home, their family, their marriage, their health, their children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren. Move upon their life, Lord God. God, as these are your covenant people, I release the blessing of God over their life right now. In Jesus' mighty name. Let's sing it out. Who can stop the Lord as we make our way up? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? dismissed at this time.
glory to God. Hallelujah. We just have a few short announcements. If this is your first time joining us, welcome, welcome, welcome. We are grateful to have you here this morning. Amen. We're going to have a great time here tonight. We invite you to visit our Welcome Center before you leave. We have something special for you directly. Para ti. Okay? For any Latinos. Uh, no. Uh, we have our Triple L Festival featuring The Chosen, April 26th through the 28th. It's going to be $20 for all three days, Friday at 5 p.m., Saturday at 3, Sunday right after service. Please sign up at the Resource Center. Registration closes April 21st. Sunday Fun Day begins on May 5th. Hallelujah. Our Sunday Fun Day. Amen. It's funny. I just found my shirt. I put it in the laundry and it's nice and clean. Dig out your shirts or visit the Resource Center to order it. Hallelujah. It smells like Downey. Churchwide outreach takes place right after the second service on that May 5th. Also, sisters, your sisterhood event is coming May 18th at 11 a.m. Hallelujah. Are you excited, ladies? Yeah. Amen. Registration is open. Register online. Early bird registration is $35 per person before April 21st. $45 per person after April 21st. Registration closes May 12th. Visit your resource center for more information. And hallelujah, we are having a baby shower to honor our sister. She's looking at me, don't put me on blast. I saw you, Mary. You looked at me like, don't do it. Amen. May 19th, amen. The baby will be arriving at Bradley International Airport. No. <laughs> Ladies, come and join. Let's be a blessing to our sister, Mary. Women. Wow, there's a lot for women. Amen. What's going on? Women, breaking strongholds. May 31st through June 1st, there's 30 spots available. First come, first serve, $35 per person. Visit your resell, resource center for more information. How many know that times there's things that we go through in life that God wants to bring deliverance to our life to break the strongholds? God is a good God. God wants his people to walk in total freedom. Amen. Oh, we have the Brotherhood Fellowship event. Moose hunting. June 15th, $10 per person, registration required. Visit the resource center to register, like moose hunting. <laughs> Amen. You're like, I'm ready. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Even this morning, amen, we're going to have a great time. Once again, thank you, Pastor Donald and Rhea, for that opportunity. Those that are, you, that are viewing this morning, amen, let's just pray. Father, we just love you and praise you. We thank you. For your spirit, your presence, your power, your anointing, your favor, God. God, this is your pulpit, God. This is your house. These are your people which are called by your name. God, let the word God, that comes forth, God, today reach and touch each and every heart. God, a stirring God. God, to captivate their spirit and their heart, God. God, I thank you to cause them, God, to grow and excel, God. God, move by your spirit. I break every hindering voice, every strategy of Satan. You are bound, broken, cast down, cast out, God. Right now, release your liberty, your freedom, your deliverance, your healing, your restoration, your salvation. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. amen. Glory to God, amen. On closing, we had a three-part series starting uh, with Minister Henry on Thursday. Minister DeMont this morning and myself right now was Kingdom Citizens Intercessory, Kingdom Citizens Souls, and we're going to end it with Kingdom Citizens Worship. Oh, yes. Amen. What is true worship? What is true worship? When we look at worship, worship is the way to fellowship with God. And it shows that God reigns in our lives. It, is, it is also reinforces the truth about ourselves and about God. When you understand what worship truly is, and you understand who you worship, who you put first, who you trust, there's a great difference. There's a difference even in your life, even in the stress factor. Because when you trust God, 
When you worship him, you say, I don't care what situation, I don't care what's happening because God, I'm going to put you first. I'm going to bring this before the altar, God, and I'm coming lifting up my hands as a sign of surrender. I surrender to your purpose, to your will, and I worship you because you are my God. You are understanding who he is. His sovereignty, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, God Almighty. When we praise him, we praise him for what he's done for us. But worship is who he is. When you magnify, put it to the test. When you magnify God, even in your home, whatever's happened in your home, you, have a, you stub your toe, you have a little argument, just change it. Just have a little harmony when you stub your toe. Ooh, and a woo, woo, woo. In a woo, 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 I worship you. I worship you, Jesus. Mm -mm -mm, this hurts so bad, but you're so good, you healed me. I, 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 I. You just worship him. Even though you, then just pray for your toe. I command the swelling to go down, I'm going to cry. But you're so good, I can't deny. Most high. Do or die. <laughs> you allow his presence. You allow him. That's even as Minister DeMont was bringing in a sermon. The word of God says how we should worship him. God is a spirit. And those who worship him must. Sometimes we forget about those little words. Must. Not might. You cannot come before a king irreverently. You have to come before his throne room reverently. Understand who he is. Even, even, if we, even if we're his kids, we have to understand he's still our dad, our father. We have to honor his position, who, who he is. It says, worship him in spirit and in truth. You see, Jesus laid out what real and true worship is. First, it's to worship God in spirit and in truth. That means that you understand who God is and all about his Godhead. You understand that this is the king of glory. Yes. You are coming and approaching him as who he is. You have to understand, this, church, because of the blood of Jesus, because of the blood of the Lamb, yes. we're able to come in to that throne room of grace. We're able to attain grace and mercy in the time of need. What are you going through today? We're going. Some of us are, might be going through stuff today. But you have access through the blood. Oh, yes. Why through the blood? Because the blood cleanses you before you come into the throne. The blood separates you, yes. sanctifies you, puts you in right standing as you come into his throne room. You're saying, God, here I am, open. The problem is that sometimes, you know what happens with worship and why sometimes people are afraid to worship? Because they're afraid to be vulnerable. They're, af they're afraid to have their hearts open because we've been hurt in life. Listen to me. God will never hurt you. God is not people. The word of God says God is not a man that he shall lie. He's not going to hurt you. You can come to him openly and allow him to heal that hurt, to restore your very being. We need to be able to come before his presence. You see, worship is when you and I give our deepest affections and highest praise to him or to something. When you come to him, are you madly in love with him as he's in love with you? Do you love God more than anything? Are you in the process of growing in that, in that love? Are you coming to the place, God, you are my affection, you are my love? Sometimes I'm driving, and I have different drives now that I'm, I'm doing. I was driving this past week, and I start, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if someone's looking at me on the side or not. I'm just worshiping, and I'm just saying, I love you, Jesus. And it just goes, and, oh, I love you, Jesus. Oh, I worship you, Lord. And I start magnet, and he comes into that van, and he's right there sitting next to me with a tambourine singing to me. You know, no, but he comes on that van and he overwhelms me with his love because you want to know something? I did not understand love. 
I did not understand what it is to be loved. I understood about how to be hurt and abused, to be broken, to be fearful, but it's through the blood, not through my ability, through the blood. It's not through your, it's through the blood that you could worship him and you could tell him, God, I love you. God, I magnify you. God, you are my world, God. You're the one, and you know what, church? I'm going to tell you, try it. Try it. Allow him to come on the scene at your workplace, in your home, and everything you do. Call upon his name. Worship him with the deepest, most great affection, and just tell him how much you love him. In the morning, when you spend time with him, worship him, magnify him. Let him come on the scene. If you have to understand that in heaven, there's going to be no prayer. There's going to be worship. This is our training here. You're going to come before the king of glory. He's going to look at you face to face. He wants to look at you. And he wants for you to know who he is. And he's going to come and look at you because I love you. I'm here for you. I heard when you worship me. I heard when you were in that dark point. Sometimes we're at a dark point. But you want to get rid of the dark point? Allow the light to come in. Allow your heart to worship. Do not allow your heart to be all up in knots. Let it go. Worship him. When you worship him, he comes on the scene to meet you. When he's on the scene, that's why I understand. I mentioned this to someone. I could say, God, I want your joy, which is mine and, and it's ours already. God, I want your healing. God, I want your deliverance. But when I ask, God, I need you and your presence here. If he is present here, if Jen is present here, I don't, she's in front of me. I could ask her whatever. She is tangible. She's there. God is that tangible yeah. right there that when you call upon his name, no matter what you're going through, you can call on him and he's right there he's, and his presence is there. So in his, the fullness of his presence, there's joy, yeah. peace, rest, yeah. power, anointing. There's everything because he's right there in front of you. Yeah. He wants to meet you. Yeah. He wants you to call on his name. You see, sometimes when we look at fear, oh, I don't want to, Sometimes we might, I don't want to disturb God. Disturb God? Where were you when he made the earth? Where were you when he made the oceans and the birds? Where were you? Were you in the mix? In his mind? Why were you born in this era, not in the 1800s, for a reason and purpose? Why were you not born in the 1700s? You were born now. There would be a lot of different hairstyles if we were 1700. I'll be up here one of those fake wigs like George Washington. But it'd be more Jorge, Jorge Washington. You have to have a little accent. Jorge Washington. See, true worship of God is when we love him with all of our hearts, soul, mind, and strength. Matthew 22, 37 through 40. What does it say there? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Amen. This is the first and greatest commandment. Hallelujah. And the second is just like love your neighbor as yourself. And it speaks that upon these two, everything, and on the law and the prophets hang all these two commandments. When I allow the love of God, when I allow his presence to come on my life, when I'm able to love him with all my body, heart, soul, and spirit, then, and I understand who he is, I'm able also to love people that is made in his image. It breaks, love breaks the barriers. There might be walls that you have put up. There might be different things that you're going through. There might be hurts that you're experiencing right now. But if you allow his hand, to touch your heart, touch your body if you need healing, bring deliverance to your soul, and you would begin to worship him and magnify him. Allow him in that place of your heart that you've been having closed for so many years. Open that closet. Allow him to come in. Allow him to clean and get rid of those cobwebs that hurt and pain. Those things that are deeply rooted. As you worship him, he will flood your soul. He will wash you clean. And he will come and make his abode there. He will come. He'll put a king-size bed in there. And he'll come. He'll be with you. 
Don't ever think, listen, not for one minute, don't ever think that you're not loved. Don't ever think that you don't matter. Don't ever think that what you're doing, what you're going through is menial. Well, it's not as bad as what somebody else is doing. If anyone, if anyone uh, of my kids are going through something, my two boys, let me fix that up because Melissa say, how many more kids do you have? <laughs> I almost got myself in trouble. I was like, um, I looked at the camera. Okay, Ooh, Jesus, I got kind of scared. Listen, real quick, I know I'm on a time limit. The other day, I went to go pick up an order at BJ's. And all of a sudden, the lady goes, okay, here, you know, da-da-da. And I'm grabbing. I said, wow, she's grabbing a whole bunch of water. And all of a sudden, he goes, yeah, this is your wife's order. And all of a sudden, they start putting on the, on the carriage baby food and other food. And I'm like, huh? They started putting diapers. My heart is racing. I said, Lord, is she not telling me something. Am I Abraham? And she's Sarah. My heart, I'm like, it's on. And I'm like, um, um, is this the right name? I was looking at the form and I'm like, she ordered, why is she ordering this? Why is she ordering diapers? Is she, and then I looked upstairs, Shannon DeVoe. I said, this is the wrong order. This is the wrong, the guy there was laughing so bad. And he's like, man, you got scared. I said, yeah, you want to feel my heart? You want to feel my heart right now? I was scared. I'm like, Yo, not right now. My boy's already old. All of a sudden, you know, papa, papa. I'm like, wait a minute. I'm like, ooh, he's been thinking about it right now. Oh, catch me, Jesus. It's when we prize God above everything else and put him first in our hearts. And you know what that means? What Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. This is what it means. It means trust the Lord. Worship is trust the Lord with all your heart. Worship the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Don't try to figure God out. He goes, in all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your path straight. Worship is about trusting him. Many times we become independent because we've been hurt. We don't trust nobody. We don't want to allow nobody to come in. We don't trust a man. We don't trust a woman. We've been hurt. We've been abused mentally, physically, emotionally, sexually. We don't allow people to enter into that area of your heart. But you know what? That area is made in a symbol of a key, and it's the cross, that it's made to be opened by him and him alone. Amen. Because it's him, when he comes inside, to dwell inside of your spirit, man, he starts doing things. Change starts to come. Healing starts to come in. Deliverance starts to come in. Peace starts coming in. You're not stressed. You're not bothered. Things could be happening. And I'm going to just say something. The world, and I mentioned this before, the world may be going through what it's going through. We might be seeing turmoil, what's happening in this world. But remember who you are. You're God's people. God will move you to Goshen. Goshen was a place that Jacob was, that Joseph was. He put his father in a safe place. God, when all the plagues were happening and things that are happening in this world, God's people are protected. And by the blood, you're in Goshen. You're going to see things and signs happen in this world. But don't look at that. Look up. Worship your God. Worship your king. Because the God of this world knows that his time is short. So we need to focus our attention on our God, our King. You see, you are the church. There is power and benefits when we worship God. When we engage in sincere worship, we open up ourselves to the divine presence and invite the transformative power of God into our lives. We Church, we're made at the beginning. And even at this time, we are made to worship him. We are made to adore him. We are made to glorify his name. We are made to exalt him. When we do that, God comes on the scene. And he comes to inhabit our praise. He is the Jehovah Shammah, the ever-present living God. What do you need him today? When you worship him today, what do you need him today? He's ever present. He's Jehovah Tehillah, not tequila. 
to heal her. He made the agave nectars and everything, but still. To heal her. That means the Lord my praise. The Lord my praise. You see, that's why it's vital for us to have the word of God with inside of us daily and be filled with the word of God daily. Because when pressures come in, what is being squeezed out of you is the word of God. So if the word of God is being squeezed out of you, worship is going to come out of you. But if, if all you're filling yourself with your own self, your own emotion, the worries and anxieties and stresses, that's what's going to come out. It's going to overwhelm you. It's going to overwhelm your mind. It's going to overwhelm your heart. But when you have the word of God inside of you, the living God, when you have that word vibrant in your heart, that life comes out of you because when the pressure is coming and pressing you, what you do as the pressure is coming, your hands are continue lifting up. It says, I worship you. I know what's happening, but God, you're alive in me and through me, God. Change the situation, Heavenly Father. I adore you. Move, my God. I need you now, God. I need you now. Yes. And he says, I'm right there because I'm your Jehovah Shammah. You. Amen. There is healing when we worship and praise him. There's physical healing when you worship him and you praise him. Because he comes to restore and to heal you. Who, what parent would want their kids ever to be sick? God is not that way. God is not that way. He loves you. See, worship has the capacity, listen, to heal. Worship has the capacity to heal emotional wounds, to alleviate stress and anxieties, and provide a sense of peace and serenity. That's what God, amen, when you magnify him, he comes right then and there. He comes and he touches your spirit and your heart. You see, if we would just worship him, if we would just worship him just for a quick minute, if you would just stand with me and just worship him, if you would magnify the king of glory, don't worry about the person that's next to you. Lift up your hand and begin to worship him. Magnify him. Call upon his name for just this one minute. Call upon him. Worship him. Each and every person individually, he wants to hear you. He wants to touch your spirit and your heart. Father God, we worship and adore you. We magnify you. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your anointing power and grace. We just love you adore you for you are God you are king God you are sovereign you are holy you are righteous God we magnify your name God there is no one like you God who is like our God there is no one church as we worship him God touch your people God heal restore and deliver God strengthen them God right now move God upon their life God move upon their homes their very life and being their mind my God we just worship you my God, we just magnify you. My God, we adore you, God. There is nobody like you, God. We worship you, Lord God. We praise you, Lord, right now, God. Thank you, Lord God. As we worship you and as we worship him right now, church, I'm going to tell you as we worship Jesus, our Lord, our Savior, our healer, our deliverer, our victory, our ever-present help in the time of need, your Father, my Father, our King of glory, as we worship him now, receive that healing from your past hurts. Receive the healing from the past pain, abuses, and torment. For, amen, because of this, he has freed you from the curse of sin and death. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I release wholeness upon hearts, minds, and bodies. I release forgiveness, deliverance, healing right now, God. And I release acceptance, God, by the King of kings and Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to your name, God. Glory to God. You have to understand that we're able to enter into his presence through the blood of Jesus. The blood of the lamb is the blood that cleanses you. The blood of the lamb is that flows through this side. The blood flows here. It flows in and through you. Amen. The blood of the lamb is what comes and brings you to the throne room of grace. God, I need mercy. I need you to touch me. Forgive me, Lord. Deliver me. Set me free. God, this has been tormenting me for far too long. I give it up to you, Lord God. I don't want to live this way, God. Heal me. Deliver me, God. I put it before your altar, and I am not going to put it back on my shoulders. 
I want liberty. What are you going through today? Allow him to heal you. Allow him to restore you. Stop doubting. Stop thinking this is, this is my lot in life. No, it's not. That's a lie from Satan. It's not your lot in life. God would never do that. God will never punish, but he's calling on you personally. He's calling you. You come to me. If your husband is not coming, you come to me. If your wife is not coming, you come to me. You come to me. If your kids are not coming, you come to me. Come to me. Allow your heart to be healed, whole and restored. Allow your heart. You could pray for your family member that is not saved. Say, God, I thank you for the salvation. But if you're not worshiping him and if you're not allowing the word of God to absorb inside, what do you have to give? Allow the word of God that is in you to rule and reign. Allow Jesus to rule and reign your heart. Be liberated. Be free. He never called you to be bound. If you want to be bound, you will be bound. But if you want to be free, amen, give a shout of glory. Magnify his name. Glory to God. As we're getting even to wind it down, I think one of my buttons flew out of my shirt right now. 1 Peter 2, 9 and 10. You guys can sit down. <laughs> that sounds kind of, you guys may be seated. Y'all can sit down. But I want to end it with this. Because this changes. If you deal with ever feeling good about yourself, your self-worth, you don't feel you're valuable enough. You don't feel you measure up. It's a lie from the pit of hell. No one in their right mind would go out there and pick up dog drop and said, well, this is rich and tender. <laughs> but why, why do we do that and allow our sins and stupidity that Satan throws at us? That's what we pick up. Oh, they're nice metal muffins. That's nasty. How many of you guys get mad whenever you step on that? You're mad. And then you're walking, you're doing that hop into your house, like, oh, my God, this dog over here. You know, especially when it's dark, then your whole house stinks. Um, it's happened to me. But what happened is I don't want that. That's right. That's right. But sometimes if we're so used to smelling that and think that this is our lot in life, I'm always going to be broken. I'm always going to be in an abusive relationship. I'm always, well, you want to know something? Break free from that. He never made that for you. He never made you to be a sound boy. He never made you over here to feel that you're less, less valuable than anything. 1 Peter 2, 9 and 10 says this. But you are. Listen to what it says. As a matter of fact, let's try to do it all together in, in secret. Ready? But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you receive mercy. You're God's chosen people. You are his chosen generation. You're not his reject. You are his holy nation. All of us together. Every nationality, because we're bought by the blood and redeemed. It doesn't matter. Amen. If I love plantains, I know you love plantains. Amen. This is not Mofongo Fellowship. It's Grace Fellowship. But it's allowing him. I am a chosen. Chosen. And also is this generation. We were chosen for this generation to make a difference here. In this city, in this state, in this nation. God has called you. Stop running away from your call and draw near to him. God, what do you have for me? God, use my life, God. God, I am here in this church. I want to learn from this ministry. God, use my life, God. Is there a perfect ministry? No. 
Is there perfect people? No, we're not perfect, but we're forgiven and redeemed and washed by the blood we are. That matters. You are his people, called by his name. We're peculiar. You know what that means? We're strange, and I like it. Just the way he is. Coming down the avenue. As long as you don't see me with that suit, that cameo hat, then I have an issue. Sorry, Pastor, if you're watching. <laughs> Amen. But it's okay. People used to talk junk about it. He talked junk about me. I'm glad that I'm strange and he loves me. I worship for who he is and what he's done for me. He loves you. He is so in love with you. Stop arguing. Stop losing and waste. Listen, time is just as precious as money. Stop arguing. Stop allowing nonsense. Stop petty nonsense, stupidity. Get rid of that. Get, get rid of that crap. And just say, God, I open myself to you. I open my heart to you. God, I give you my heart. I give you my life. Spend time with him in the morning. Spend time with him in the noon day, in the evening. Worship him. Spend time in his word and allow his word to transform you. Then when his word is transforming you, you will be able to intercede and stand in the gap. When you are able to understand who he is, you'll be able to go out there and understand the importance of winning souls and reaching people for the kingdom of God. When you understand who you are, who you worship, who you belong, whose possession you are. You are the possession of the living God. You belong to him. You are his, and he is yours. To that time when we are called home, man, and I'm going to have a blast up there when I go home. Amen. I want a big wheel. I want a big wheel. Like I used to. They're trying to bring those adult big wheels again and the green machine. My green machine broke. It just went one side. I went, what was going on? I don't know if you guys remember that green machine thing. Yeah, I think I was just a little bit too heavy. Johnny took it on me. We were next door neighbor. He's like, Gotti, let me take it. I said, where's he going? He's gone. He's leaving. Bye, Johnny. <laughs> He's going with his, with his green machine. No, but God is so good. And even as we close, even here, um, right now, as you have your eyes closed, your head bowed, Father God, we just thank you, Lord God, today for your presence, for your word, for your love, for being here, God, and touching our very life, God. Even today, if there's someone that does not know Jesus, and you would like to know Jesus, there's nobody watching with an uplifted hand. We'll pray for you. Amen. We will pray together and just ask God to move. Amen. But if not, just to switch the order of the service, enter in to his rest. Worship brings rest. When you read Hebrews 4, worship brings rest. The children of Israel failed because they forgot their worship before God. They went about their own business, their own means, their own affections. But when your heart and your affection is towards the living God, he will move on your life. As every head is bowed and every eye is closed, you're like saying, you're going to say, today, minister Ed, because I'm going to allow worship to rule my heart and my mind. If this is you, nobody's watching, just uplift your hand so I can release the blessing of God. Hallelujah. God, I release that blessing. God, upon your saints, I release your blessing upon your people right now. Heal them and restore them right now. God, let them grow, God, in the love, God, for your presence, for your anointing grace. God, heal them, God. Restore them. I break the chains. God, I speak healing in their entire body, in their mind, their spirit deliverance by the blood. God, let them have an experience this week of true worship, God, and never stop, God. Continue to move forward. I see these hands. God bless you. You can put them down. Amen. And even today, upon our benediction, uh, we're going to put a song over here, and uh, it's called The Throne Room by Kim Walker Smith. The altar is going to be open. Amen. If you want to join us, and worship the Lord, and after that, be blessed, church. But I just want this song just to come up, and I want you, if you are able to worship, worship with me, and just have your eyes and understand that you're coming in to 
to the throne room of grace by the blood. Thank you for joining us today. It has been a pleasure to serve you. If you made Jesus Lord of your life today, please message us on Facebook. As a church, we look forward to helping you discover your purpose in life. Stay blessed and have a wonderful day.